Another significant chapter in St Kilda's history was the move to here, Waverley Park, through the 1990s. It was a transformative time not only for the club moving away from Moorabbin, but also for the AFL. We became a national competition and players transitioned from part-time to full-time athletes. It was the home to some of the most memorable moments in St Kilda's history. The iconic Lights Out game, winning pre-season premierships and breaking a long-standing finals drought. But it was also home to some of our most iconic cult heroes through the 1990s. And let's go meet a couple of them. Peter Spider Everett. Oh, there he is. Great. The legend. How are you? Yeah, good, great good. to see you. Great to be here. Take us back to 96 because we did have one of our Early successes, we oh, won a night premiership. At that time, it was a big thing, the NC Cup. It was like we'd won the uh, the day grand final. <laughs> it was huge because, look, yep, Saints supporters had been starved since 66. Yeah. And just to win that night, the Ansett Cup grand final here at, under lights at night, it kind of set you up and thinking, you little beauty, this is going to be a, a great year. And, you know, we played Carlton out here. And, yeah. you know, we were winning by five or six goals at half time. Yeah. And we continued on. And, and through the third quarter, I still remember I was, I was leading just on the wing out there and I've taken a mark in front of Earl Sporting at Carlton and he's gone to spoil the ball but he's nowhere near the ball and he's just clipped me on the jaw and he actually broke my jaw and I didn't tell anyone Yeah. because I wanted to go out and celebrate. <laughs> I, didn't want to, I didn't want to miss the biggest celebration the that could have had for years and years. I want to ask you about the Lights Out game here at Waverley because that is one of the most historic nights that everyone still remembers. The night the lights went out at Waverley what are your recollections? Yeah, it was huge. It was uh, down in the pocket, and they were about to throw it up, and then it flashed, and then it come back on. We're yeah. like, oh, oh, this is all right. And then, bang, gone. And it was pitch black. You could not see anything. The only thing you could see was the green exit signs. Yeah. And then you hear the right started outside, and oh. they're starting to light up stuff on the goalposts. Yeah. And you think, this is mad. This yeah. is absolutely madness. Then they'd come to the decision that, OK, we're going to replay it on Tuesday night. Yeah. And we said, that's fine, but same teams. Yep. But they said, no, you're allowed to bring in and change your team however you want. Right. So, of course, they bring in James Hurd, a couple of others, smashes, carvers, right. we lose. And if they didn't bring in Hurd in that, we still probably would have won. And they picked up the game from where the, the game was at. They didn't start the game again. Is that no, right? Yeah, it was yeah, it yeah. continued on yeah, from whatever the scores absolutely. were. Absolutely. Yeah. Continued it on. Tell us a bit about your uniqueness and your way of showing your personality and, and I suppose why you did things a little bit differently. You put yourself out there and it puts self-pressure on yourself. Yeah. You've got to perform. You know, there's times there when really early in my career, I, I struggled and then uh, you know, kind of had this persona that I kind of kept throughout my career, which right or wrong, wrong um, kind of got me through, got me in trouble at certain times, but then there was benefits on the other side. So, yeah, you know, and one of the, funny you mentioned it because I, I thought I, I might gonna, bring one on. You have got it. I was going to ask about the dreadlocks and the headband. Well, my dreadies were, I don't want to reveal it, they were actually fake. What? Yeah, they used to take four hours to do and it. it used really? to be horse hair. Yeah. And wow. Then I, yeah, so that was disappointing to a lot of people. But then I got the headband. The, the headband. The iconic headband, yeah, absolutely. Because I used to have tape and we were sponsored yep. by Puma back in those days. So yep. they said, no, we'll make you some headbands. Yep. And we said, oh, well, here at Waverley, one game, we said, well, we'll sell them out the front. Yeah. And then the AFL said, no, they're not AFL endorsed because, you know, they take too much of the profits. We said, no way. All right, what can we do? And, you know, we know Mulgrave Country Club across the road. Right. So we said, no, we'll set up a stand and sell them over there. Thinking, this is a great idea. Clever. So I got on radio and said, this is what we're going to do. Yep. And, yep, fantastic. We didn't think about the, uh, the complications of it because we have hundreds of kids leaving the, the Waverley car park, yeah. running across a six lane highway <laughs> to the Mulgrave, Mulgrave Country Club. So cars are slowing down, kids are running across, trying to get their headbands. So it was fantastic that they all had them, but yeah, we didn't quite think it through that, yeah, there's a massive uh, thoroughfare of uh, cars yeah. coming into the footy on game day. Yeah, fair enough. What were you charging? What, what, what? Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Oh. Did you? You would have had well, one. I remember, I definitely remember trying to get my hands on one. I'm not sure if I did, but that was iconic through through the 90s and, and you were a big personality and you're a huge part of the football club. Let's go meet another one because wow. I think there's another cult hero for a different reason. He's one of the greats. He's waiting for us upstairs. Here he is. Another cult hero, Lazar. And what was it like playing here for Lazar? Like, did you enjoy playing Waverley? Like, I mean, it was always talk about the conditions yeah. and the... Well, we, but, yeah, look, we, we had to uh, transition from Moorabbin to Waverley. And the ground probably suited a lot of us because we had a lot of running plays like Winmar and all that sort of thing. But it was probably the coldest place on earth, <laughs> Waverley, especially when it was, you know, middle of winter. What about when you did go out at Waverley? Like, when you used to come out here, there was nothing, like, it was just 
farmland. Like there was only cows. So like you just yeah. park, and we didn't have a yeah. real designated area to park. They just, yeah, you just park as the next car. Yep. So you might have to walk nearly half a k through all the punters just to get to the rooms. Yeah, like, yeah. The, you're talking like probably a couple of kilometres of parking space, and you sort of forget where you parked your car after the game. But you're yeah, walking into the into the ground, you'd have people slapping you on your back, hope you have a good game, you know, do this, do that. So you'd be living the game a thousand times before you got into the yeah. into the turnstile, you know, and um, it was a sort of tough time, you know, back in the day, wasn't it? You were a cult hero. Through the 90s, the Saints fans, they loved no, Lazar. No. Yeah, and why, loved and why did, what was it? Well, the players just hid behind him. Yeah. Because <laughs> he'd go oh. into the ruck and just smash blokes, yeah. and then they'd be scared, and then I'd just run around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did it mean to play for St Kilda through that era? It's an honour, you know, as a player, and you've been through it yourself. And um, it's, I think you, you stay a saint once you've played with them, you stay a saint forever. But, you know, and you look back at your predecessors, Carl Dittrich and Alan Morrow and Jeff Saru and those guys, and they were your mentors. They were actually your ruck coaches back in the day. Yeah. So you had to follow that tradition. Yeah, I think you, you kind of look back at you know, the history, and yeah, only one premiership, but so many great defining moments. Yeah. Anything from lights out and then, you know, setting the, a goal post on fire to Nicky Wimmer lifting up point pointing to the colour of his skin. So it goes to show that you don't need premierships to have a great football club. There's been no bigger moment at Marvel Stadium than round 14, 2009. The up and coming Saints are 13 and zip and they face the champs that are the Cats, also 13 and zip. They uh, kind of despised us because we had all the top draft picks and they, you know, Geelong did it the hard way and they're a hard yakker and all that kind of thing. But th there was a rivalry there that was kind of started uh, early 2000s. 